Hey, statistics students. Today we're going to talk about probability. We're going to talk about probability when it comes to using two-way tables. So let's get going. We have two slides. It shouldn't take us too long. Uh, the FIA teachers at Glen High School want to evaluate how many students need extra swimming lessons before their swimming unit. We have a two-way table here. You'll notice on this two-way table, the totals are not filled out. I did that on purpose um, because here's the issue is sometimes you will get a two-way table and you will not even see the totals. And I just want you to get in the habit of please making sure that you are um, figuring out those totals because you're going to need those for the probability behind it. Okay, so let's get going. We have ninth graders. We have 120 that can swim and 60 that can't. So that gives us 180 right here. 10th grade, we have 160 that can swim, 30 that cannot, that's 190. Here we have 170 that can swim, 20 that can't. Again, we have 190. 12th graders, we have 150 that can swim, okay? And 50 that can't swim, that's gonna give us 200. What I'm going to do right now to ensure that we don't make any mistakes is I'm going to type in this to add it all up. So I have 180 plus 190 plus 190 plus 200. And that gives us a total of 760 high school students who are taking FIAD. Now what we want to do is we want to add up all of the kids who can't swim and all of the kids who can swim. So if I add up 50 plus 20 plus 30, that gives me 100, and then that gives me 160, right? Because 30 plus 20 is 50, 50 plus 50 is 100, 100 plus 60 is 160. Now I could add this all up, but what's really nice is I know I have a total of 760, and I have 160 that can't swim, which means if I add all this up here, I should get 600 who can swim, and you could add that up if you want, but 600 plus 160 gives me 760. Now we're ready to answer a couple, answer a couple of probability questions based off reading our two-way table. If a FIA teacher randomly selects a student at the high school, we should put who is assuming they are taking FIA. What is the probability it is a ninth grader? Okay, again, we're gonna have to make an assumption here that should have been written in here, assuming they are a FIA student. So imagine we have 760 FIAD students names in a hat, right? What's the probability they're gonna be a ninth grader? So let's look how many, remember probability is the number of successes, right? Divided by our total. So how many total students are there? There's 760 total. What do we want? What's our success? A ninth grader, there's 180 of them. So I'm just gonna put 180 up there. And remember what I said about probability and for our statistics class, you can put that as a decimal, you can put it as, leave it as a fraction, you can change it to a percent. It doesn't matter to me. We are expressing the probability right here. What is nice about expressing it as a percentage, if I take 180, okay, whoops, see, let me pause it. If I take 180 on my calculator, which is right here, and I divide it by 760, What's nice about that is when we get it as a proportion, like 0.236, so I'm gonna put 0.24 as I round, and I multiply by 100 or I move that decimal around, a percentage is nice, okay? Because we can envision that a little bit more. We can think about that as the chances of, is it likely or not, which we'll talk about down the road. But for now, if you wanna leave it as a fraction, that's fine as well, okay? The next one is what's the probability a person is a ninth grader or a 12th grader? Remember, whenever we see the word or, we wanna add them together. That's the addition rule. So we take the probability that they're in ninth grade plus the probability they're in 12th grade. Then we have to ask ourselves, are they mutually exclusive or not? Meaning, can they be in ninth grade and 12th grade at the same time? And the answer there is no. So we're not going to subtract it out. We only have to subtract the both if it can happen at the same time. Since they're mutually exclusive, we don't need to worry about subtracting that out. 
So we want to look and we want to say, well, what's the probability? They're a ninth grader. That's 100. And we already figured that out. That's 180 over 760. Plus, what's the probability they're a 12th grader? So out of 760, how many are there? Let's look. There's 200 12th graders. So together then, when I add the numerators and keep the denominator when we're adding fractions, 200 plus 180, that gives me 380. And if we want to, you guys, if we want to, you can go ahead and you can say 380 divided by 760, and we get 0.5. So that's nice. We can wrap our head around that a little bit more than 380 over 760. But again, it doesn't matter to us or to me, excuse me. 50% though is your final probability. I would take any of these three answers. Um, I'd take a simplified version too. I'd take one half, it doesn't matter, okay? Let's talk about number three. What's the probability they can swim, okay? So now our success is that they can swim. How many total people can swim? 600 total can swim. That's our total number of successes. Out of our total sample, 760. And I'm gonna just leave it just like that for this one, okay? Just like that. Um, but again, if you want, you can go ahead and figure out that probability. On this next one, we wanna know what's the probability that they can swim or is an 11th grader, okay? So the probability that they can swim, I'm gonna put S for swim plus the probability that they're an 11th grader. Now we have to ask ourselves, can we be a swimmer and be in 11th grade? And this little upside and down U right here, that's a statistics term that I use more often in AP stats, but in regular stats, just so you know, if you when you, when you go on and take a higher level statistics college class, um, that that intersection point, that means intersecting that means and happening at the same time can we swim and be in 11th grade at the same time yes we can so we do need to subtract it out okay so how am i going to read this i want to know how many out of the 760 are swimmers and if we look at that there are 600 people that can swim then out of the 760 how many are 11th graders, okay? There's 190 11th graders. Now I need to figure out what's the probability that they're a swimmer and an 11th grader. So out of the 760, how many swim and are also in 11th grade? Okay, swim and also in 11th grade, that's right here, 170. So some of you are maybe wondering, well, why do we actually have to subtract out the both? Well, let's think about that, okay? I'm gonna take my highlighter here. If I look at this, I wanted to know how many can swim. That was that 600. Then I wanted to know the probability that they're an 11th grader. That was that 190. I had to subtract out that 170 because it was counted twice. So when things are not mutually exclusive and we use that addition rule, I had to subtract that one out because it is counted twice there. It's counted with the Ken swim and with the 11th grader. So I subtract it out once. Okay, and that's where that addition rule comes from, where we have to subtract the both out. Okay, now I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm going to take 600 from right over here plus 190. That comes from right here, the 11th graders, and then minus 170. And that gives me 620. I keep that common denominator over 760. And I make it now 620 divided by 760. And I get 0.82, so approximately 82%. Okay, let's move on to our last page, you guys. Remember, if I'm going too fast, I naturally talk um, kind of fast. So if I'm going too fast for you, make sure you pause to write things down, so on and so forth, write down any questions that you might have. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're on to our next one. I did find an error on here. So you are going to miss a sentence on your blank notes if you printed it off. So pause right now and add this sentence right there. That's going to help you out. Okay. So it says in an 11th and 12th grade phi ed class of 32 students, eight of the 11th graders played basketball, five 12th graders did not. There's a total of 10 11th graders in the class. Create a two-way table for the data. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do, guys, is we want to just go like this. And we want to say, what's going on? Okay. That's the first thing that we want to do. Well, what's going on right now is it looks like we have 11th graders and 12th graders in the class. Okay. So I'm going to put 11th here, 12th here. And then what else is going on? Okay. Um, some of them play basketball. And some of them do not play basketball, okay? So what I'm going to put here is I'm going to put b-ball and then no b-ball. And then once you figure out the kind of the two things that are going on, what you want to do then is you want to add one more line, okay? And that's where you want to put the totals. So based on this information, we got to figure this out. So if we look, it says, okay, out of the 11th and 12th grade five class of 32 students. So this is the total number of, of students. It doesn't say if they play basketball or not. They're just saying, hey, out of the 32 students. So that's our grand total right here. That's what goes down here, 32. Okay, so we figured that out already. I'm going to cross it off because I'm done with that number. Now it says, uh, 32 students, eight of those 11th graders played basketball. So we know out of the 11th graders, okay, out of the 11th graders, eight of them play basketball. So I'm going to go to 11th grade and I'm going to put eight right here, okay? Five of the 12th graders did not. So out of the 12th graders, we have five right here. They did not play basketball. So I've used eight. And I've used five. I don't worry about 11th or 12th grade here, here. Okay. What else do we know? We know that there's a total of 10 11th graders in the class. Okay. So if there's a great, a total of 11th of, I'm sorry, of 10 11th graders in the class on the 11th grader role, I'm going to put 10 here. And now we're just going to use some algebra to fill some things out. Okay. So what do we know, ladies and gentlemen? Well, if we know that, okay, so eight plus what gives me 10? So I could just do 10 minus eight, which is two, okay? Now to fill that out, I know how many people do not play basketball. Two plus seven, well, that's 17, right? What am I thinking? Two plus seven, I was looking at this 10 because I'm thinking about the next thing that happens to me sometimes. My mind's always on the next thing to do, that's seven. Well, now what I need to do is you have this 10 here. I need to figure out the total number of 12th graders, the total number of basketball players, and the total number of 12th graders who play basketball. So what I know right now is I know that I have a total of 32 students, okay? And I know that I have 10, right? 10 total 11th graders. So what I can do is I can take 32 minus 10, and that's gonna give me 22. I have 22 12th graders, okay? 22 12th graders. So now I need to take 22 minus five, right? To figure out how many play basketball. So 22 minus five, what is that gonna be? That's gonna be 17. Okay, so what am I doing right now, guys? I'm just doing some subtraction, some logic to fill things in, okay? Lastly, I want to figure out how many total play basketball. 17 and 8 together, well, that makes 25, okay? 25 plus 7 also gives me 32. I'm good to go. I've created my two-way table. So just a quick sum up what we did. We drew our lines. We filled in what we wanted here. And then we filled in our totals over here. We filled in what we knew inside and we had to use a little bit of logic, a little bit of algebra to figure out the rest. 
Now let's go ahead and let's figure out the probability here. If you randomly select a student, what's the probability that you select an 11th grader or a basketball player? So that's the probability of an 11th grader plus the probability of a basketball player minus the probability of both an 11th grader and someone who plays basketball. Well, I think out of the grand total 32, how many 11th graders are there? And there are 10 total 11th graders, right? Plus, how many play basketball? There are a total of 25 out of the 32 that play basketball. Now, I want to subtract the both out of the 32 how many are 11th graders and also play basketball? That's eight right there. So open our calculator because it's getting a little later in the day here. I'm going to put this in just to make sure I don't make any mistakes on you on my math. 11 plus 25, right? Okay. Then minus eight. Okay. We get 28 out of 32. And if you want, you can go ahead on that calculator, 28 divided by 32 equals 0.875, which is 87.5% chance. If I would put all these names in a hat, the probability that I'll get an 11th grader or a basketball player, okay? What should we have learned? We should have learned how to read a two-way table, how to do some probability from it, how to do use the addition rule, talking about if we need to subtract or not and then also how to create that table. You guys have a great day.